Here we go. Oh, beauty. Beauty. Oh, oh, what a beautiful, beautiful fish to start the day. Beautiful chunk. Good 15 incher. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. Solid 14. So, uh, I caught that beauty on a uh, olive flash paradigm. I am on a, uh, it's the beginning of June, and you can see I'm on this beautiful, beautiful stretch of water. Nice pocket water here, really love this type of fishing. Just started and got that nice solid chunk. This area looks really nice here. There we, there we go. Oh boy, that was a big fish. Whew, I think he broke me off. Son of a gun. Boy, that was a big fish. Damn. Okay. I uh, lost that fish and went to the bank there, made a, an adjustment and I shortened up my tippet, just have a single fly on. I put a stone pony on. I just feel like I'm going to be a little bit more accurate in this pocket water. So, uh, let's see how we do with that. There we go. That's a decent fish. Right up in that skinny. Look at that fish. <laughs> in that skinny pocket over there. That's awesome. That's the beauty about fishing pocket water with a single fly. It's got a 3-3 bead on. I can be very, very accurate. Look at that beauty. Oh boy. That's a horsome up here. I love it when these big fish swim upstream. It actually helps out. That's a solid chunk on the stone pony. Look at that, look at those sparse spots. What a beauty. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. That is awesome. So I started out with a double nymph rig i was a little lower and then i moved up into this pocket water i did hook that nice fish here but i could get a better drift here but i'm really going to be picking apart these pockets and you can see right out there there's a little bit of white water and the boulder's just exposed and i popped it in there and he hit right away it's really shallow over there it's probably not even a foot of water but you can see there's a deep hole just behind it so he just moved up in there Love that. Line's all frayed, so make a quick change. By that big rock over there i'm gonna see if i can well i see by i see why that big one bit there boy what a nice deep channel that was he was king of that hole drifting right through that channel i'm missing it
There we go. <laughs> that was awesome. Little guy, but that made me happy. That was, uh, that's the beauty about throwing a single fly. I mean, I did not have a lot of room. Oh, that's a brookie. That's awesome. There's a nice pen's little surprise. Beautiful little guy. So you see that big boulder and there's a channel right there and it, it goes from the beginning of that rock right there and I was able to tuck that thing right in there and he hit it. Actually, I, I believe he hit it in the cast before that, but just when you get in pocket water like this, that's uh, you really, really better served by uh, going single fly. You can really pick this stuff apart. There we go. Pop it right in that pocket. Uh, nice brownie. <clears throat> Usually when you're fishing pocket whirl like this, they're really, really aggressive. I saw him actually shoot out from under a rock and nail it. That was really cool. That was a great strike. Boy, these average size brownies on pens are just absolute beauties. Just chunks, man. He inhaled that stone pony. Look at that brown. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. So you can see this pocket right here. There's a flat rock right here, and there's that real slow area. And I had made a couple casts, but I just wasn't getting down. And that last one, I just tucked it in there really nice, and it I could just tell it just dropped down in there, and I actually saw it move out from under that rock. That was that was a cool fish. Let's see if there's another one in here. That's not the spot. That's the spot. Nope. See, this is the beauty about one fly. Actually, that wasn't an awful drift. But there's a fish. <laughs> there you go. I knew there could be two in there. That first one before, or just the cast before this, it wasn't an awful drift, but it was actually moving sideways. And that's the beauty about using one fly. Um, you know, you get two flies on, you get different currents yanking it, and it's a much, you're gonna get a much more natural drift in pocket water like this using one fly. And he bit that stone pony really nice. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. Thought there might be two in there. It's just, it's just really ideal. You got this flat rock with a ledge, and that second. So the cast before that, my bug came this way. I made another cast just a little bit further, tucked it down there, and it went downstream on me, and he nailed it. There it. Oh, 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 oh. That was a. That was a nice hit. Damn, he did hit again. <laughs> that was awesome. Just made a uh, little adjustment in my positioning. And I was able to tuck it in there and get a nice vertical drift in a really small pocket that's fairly quick. And that's a good 25 feet away. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. <clears throat> so you can see this pocket right here. And I was about three steps downstream for me. And I hooked them. And, um, and then I, you know, I actually waited probably three minutes or so. Then I came up here and I made a nice tuck cast in there. And I got a vertical sighter and I was able to get him to hit again.
Oh, nice fish. Nice fish. Just, just a little rock over there. Popped it in front of that. It was sitting right in front of that rock. Right next to the bank. These nice fish, they just dog you in the, it's got a little depth here and he's just dogging me. Just dogging me here. If I can get him above me. There we go. Nice, nice, nice fish. He hit the, uh, Oh, flat boy, he's at least 17. Big old chunk. Big old chunk brownie. Oh, yeah. He's 17 all day. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. That was awesome. That was awesome. So I switched over to a double nymph rig. It's more of the classic... Uh, riffly water i can get really nice drifts here it's really sunny it's midday actually it's uh, about two o'clock and there's a nice slow stretch over there along the bank you see that bubble line there's a light colored rock it was sitting just on the upstream side of that did a nice tuck cast and he probably hit it a foot into the drift Ooh. I don't know if that was a fish or the bottom there. Let's replicate that cast. That's not it. There we go. There we go. Yep, that was that fish. Oh, nice fish again. Look at that. Look at that fish, what a nice fish. It's another, another big one. Boy, that's, that's the thing about it is if you, wow, if you make that cast and you you hook a fish, and if he don't, you don't sting him, you've just got such a good chance, if you can replicate that drift again, you got such a good, or a good chance of hooking him, get him to bite him again. I get him to bite again, I should say. Nice, nice fish. Ah. Quick release, that's okay. Boy, he was a solid 17 incher. He was just like that other one. Got me all tangled there. But you can see there's a flat rock over there. And the first cast I made over there, I thought I had a hit. Made a couple more, really didn't hit the spot. Poor drifts. I took one step forward, made a nice cast. I was able to replicate that drift before and he nailed it. I love it when a plan like that comes together. Now I gotta untangle this stuff. All right, back in the game. You know, this is, uh, I really like this section of pens right here. It's just, um, it's really nondescript water. There's just big rocks. It's not super deep. It's, uh, you know, you get little troughs in there, maybe two, two and a half feet deep. Uh, but I just love picking apart this stuff. And there's a saying in pens that uh, look for the rock and you'll find a fish. And 
It's uh, kind of a play on words because there's big rocks everywhere. But if you really work these areas, and in my experience, really, it's not only pens, it's any, any stream you fish. When the sun comes out, those fish are going to slip up against those rocks and just kind of hang in the shade. Uh, if it was cloudy cover, I think they'd be out a little bit more in these runs. But um, just got to really pick it apart here. There's a the fish. Right by that rock again. It's funny. He hit the dropper, he's a little guy. It's funny, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes you just feel really good about drifts. And I was trying to get it up along that rock and uh, I just felt like a fish was gonna hit. Even though he's a little guy, it's still pretty rewarding when when you expect it and it actually happens. And <clears throat> that rock right there, I just felt like if I got it going right next to it, one was hanging there. Sure enough, that little dude was right there. Boy, there's a good looking run over there. Just wanted to work this water before we get to it. Get into position here. Make some nice drifts. Tuck it in there. That's a good, good cast. There we go. Right by that rock. <clears throat> he hit the uh, olive flash. It's been good to me this week. there mr. Brown <clears throat> so I knew this is a really nice run there's some depth over here there's one lone rock just really made a nice cast up there and right when it got on this side of the rock it nailed it that's when you're out there and you're especially when you're in those really juicy runs and there's just kind of a lone rock sitting there just work the front side the side closest to you, the side, uh, the side, far side, and uh, just try to get your bugs to almost scrape those rocks. And uh, that's where those fish are going to be hiding, especially on a sunny day like today. Sunny days are tough fishing, but the fish are always catchable. They're always catchable. They just might not slide out into the runs, uh, especially the shallow runs because they're exposing themselves with the sun. So you really have to pick them apart, look for those hiding places, and just really make accurate casts and really try to get, and six inches can make all the difference. If you're six inches away from that rock, they're not gonna touch it. If you are literally almost dragging next to that rock, that's when you're gonna have your best chance. There we go. Oh, that is just awesome. So I was below there, kind of maybe 10 feet or so down. I was making upstream casts and I just, um, he hit the France fly on the dropper. I just, uh, I mean, I was making good drifts maybe closer to me, but the upper part I was not getting down. So I just came up and I was able to fish it uh, now, I was getting a drift. Um, thank you there, little buddy. I was getting a, you know, almost a vertical cider across from me, and uh, he hit it. And that's another thing. I'm, I'm a good 25 feet away from that hole, and you just can't uh, get up on it, especially on the sunny days. If it was low cloud cover, you'd get a little closer, but you really got to stay away in the sun. This is a nice looking run here. I'm gonna get sideways to it. Fish it the right way. Tuck it down there.
There we go. First, so let me tell you what I did there. Decent fish. So I'd fish this run. I have a 2.8 bead on and I've got a 2.3 on the dropper. And I just, just wasn't getting down. It's just not even that deep here. It's maybe two and a half feet in there. It might, eh, it could be three feet, but the wind keeps messing with my drift. So I just cut my fly off, put a size 14 waltz worm with a 3.3 bead. And that was my first cast, made a perfect drift. And got this really solid, beautiful brownie. Good 13 incher. Nice chunk. Look at those gorgeous orange spots. What a beauty. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. I caught that fish by just simply managing my weight. Just got a great looking run here. And I just wasn't liking my drift. A little bit of wind. Make the switch. First cast. Got him. You can see that wind now. That is a lot of wind. Just ripping my... I'm just going to wait for the gusts to die down. I have a cigar. Wait for the wind to die down and fish this front that looks nice over there as well actually the wind just died down so let's take advantage of it oh he whacked it right there at the end I don't know if you can see that cider jump. I just extended my drift. I might be able to get him to hit again. I just extended my drift to, I just kept reaching. I'm just reaching out there. And there he is. <laughs> That's all you gotta do. You can extend the drift, just reach your arm out and lower the rod tip. And he hit it twice in a row. And I still have that he hit my dropper. I got a simple, stupid, simple pheasant tail on the dropper. But that was, I caught this fish because I put that 3-3 bead on and that was another thing that helped me extend that drift. Nice chunk. No, I'm sorry, he hit the, uh, he hit the waltz. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. So once again, what I did in this run right here, it's not super deep, but it's actually deep for this area I'm fishing. It's, it's really, really gorgeous. Probably, I'm guessing it might be between two and a half and three feet of depth there. There's a, there's a, you know, it's a nice trough. So I'm standing on a shallow area and I see the shallow area on the other side. And that fish, there's a rock right there. So the first drift I extended, let me put my hook in the keeper here. So I had a nice vertical sighter and then I extended it. And what I did is I reached out and I lowered my rod tip and the sighter was just able to just start dipping down. There's a rock, rock ledge. He hit it the first time. I, I recast and I did the same thing and he hit it the second time. If you can replicate the cast, when you get a hit, if you can replicate that cast and get that same exact drift, you get a really good shot of getting that fish to hit again. There's a fish. Oh. You can see these two exposed rocks in front of me and it forms a chute. Trout love to lay in those chutes. Got it right down the middle and he popped it. He hit my dropper. I put a uh, shrimp pink 
It's a size 18 shrimp pink butt walt worm. It's a good little bug. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. So yeah, that's a little size 18 waltz with a shrimp pink ice dub butt. Good little bug. Just some real subtle flash in it. It's a nice rock right here. I'm gonna tuck it, try to bring it right next to it. Nice shoot there. That's a nice, oh, I had a hit right there on that edge, you know. Try to replicate that. Same drift. There he is. <laughs> he hit the uh, shrimp pink butt waltz. On the dropper. Cute little guy. There we go. Right next to that rock. Got a nice drift right on the back side of that rock, right on the edge of it. And he hit the olive flash paragon. Thank you there, Mr. Brown. So you can see this rock right here made a, night, a couple casts, and, but I was trying to get it on that far side, right on the edge, took it right on the edge and he nailed it. This section, this is, uh, I may have worked, I don't know, maybe 150 yards of stream, and I've caught a ton of fish. Really, when I've gotten my bugs rubbing, almost rubbing, I should say, the edge of these, of these rocks, I've had really good success. So when you're out on a stream like this, and you've got, this is just a great looking area here, and you've got that one rock, you really gotta work that rock just if you're like i said it before if you're six inches off of it you're not going to get the fish to move you really got to keep making those casts until you get that perfect drift right on the edge and once you've really worked it then you can move on It's a real, real nice area here. There we go. I just kept working and working and working it until I got that perfect drift. That was just too fishy of a spot not to have a fish. He hit the olive flash paragon. Nice chunk, missed him, or quick release. So you can see that big rock there, fast water here, fast water on the other side. It was right on that, the inside edge of that far run there, and I just kept trying to get the perfect tuck cast in there and finally I did and I knew once I got my cider vertical over there he whacked it that was a good drift there's a nice shoot over there bring it right down there edge of that rock there's mm, he whacked it There's a fish. <clears throat> so I'd fish this run, or this area, I should say, and 
I had a hit up here. It's a nice fish, real nice fish. I had a hit up here and I just um, gave it a rest, changed my fly, put a stone pony on. First cast, he nails it right up in there. Real nice brownie. Sometimes, you know, when you get a nice fish, sometimes when you get a hit like that and you don't sting them, if you give it a rest, I made a couple other casts, he didn't hit it, gave it a rest, changed my fly, first cast, he nails the stone fly. Real, real nice brownie. Real nice. That's a, that's a 16 inch or at least nice big old boy stone pony thank you there mr brown good 16 inches that stone pony's been good to me today There we go. Nice fish. Nice fish in that skinny, skinny water. Hit the stone pony. Oh, <laughs> that is just... That is just awesome. I got me get over here. Ah, there we go, in the net. Nice fatty. Nice fatty gulped that stone pony down thank you there mr brown look at that guy what a beauty thank you there mr brown love penn's creek love it just in that skinny water over there fantastic There you go. Nice fish. Real nice one. Nice fish. Up in that skinny water. Oh man. He's a big one. He could be 18. Big old fatty. Look at that. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice fish. Look at that beautiful Penn's Creek brownie. 18. Love Penn's Creek. Thank you, Mr. Brown. So I'm going to be calling it quits here on Penn's Creek. Uh, boy, what a great day I had. Uh, Started out early uh, downstream in some really nice pocket water. Did really well there. Just single nymphed it with a uh, size 14 stone pony. Uh, then I moved up into this water behind me where it was more uh, traditional runs. I mean, it was a little pocket watery, but I could double nymph it and I was getting really nice drifts. Uh, and then uh, I'm moving up here into some more pocket water, put the stone pony back on and... Um, did really well just single nymphing with the stone pony again so the the one takeaway i have i mean i just absolutely love pens creek but if you're fishing pens or if you're fishing a stream similar to this you can see how i was really focusing on those big boulders in the runs and just making sure my drifts were almost scraping them and, and you'll see that especially on sunny days like this clear water the fish tend to move 
um, on the edges of those, in the shadows, uh, uh, and just, um, I was really concentrating on my drifts, really making sure that I was almost scraping those rocks and I had a lot of success. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe. And as always, tight lines, everybody. I'll talk to you later.